Hey guys, and welcome to Logodesign.net. My name's Lila Higgins, and I'll be your instructor today. I've been a designer for over 10 years, and for the last eight years, I've run my own agency. Now for this logo that I'm gonna show you today, I wanted to get a little bit playful. I imagine that this is a locksmith, and they want to play off of Sherlock's wits and his smarts, but I wanted to keep it super clean, and so I used really clean lines, and also incorporated the keyhole to give it a little bit more of that playful vibe. Now today I use tools like Illustrator and Procreate, but you can use any of the design tools that you use at home to recreate this process. Without further ado, let's get started. For this video, I'm going to be starting out with a sketch pad and a pencil. Then we'll move into an iPad using Procreate and my Adonit stylus. And then finally, we'll move to my MacBook Pro where we use Illustrator to clean things up. Step one, sketch out your design. And then after you sketch out your design, you're going to want to trace over it with a darker pen so you can actually see it better as you're designing it. Now, when you're choosing a hand-lettered font, you can copy fonts. You can use inspiration from Pinterest and gather different styles that you like and then sketch out your idea. I recommend starting with a pencil so that you actually can erase and start over if you don't like it and then tracing over with a darker pen like the one pictured here. As I went through this design, I decided I wanted to give it a little bit of personality, so I played with the ascender and descender lines, um, went a little bit higher on the R, for example, and gave the H a little bit of a flare. And then I actually added in some elements around the O so that it made it look like a lock and gave the logo a little bit of personality. Now, you don't have to do this step. You can just use the pencil version, but I do like to have an original copy of the logo that I design in pen um, just for portfolio purposes and so I can see it a lot better in procreate. On to step two. For step two, you want to take a photo and import it into Procreate. So as you can see here, I've got my photo and it's on its own layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a new layer so that I'm working on a separate layer than the one that the photo is on. Next, I'm going to use my default brush. It's the gel pen brush under inking that just comes with Procreate when you download it. Um, and if you want to see my detailed brush settings, you can look here and pause. The next step is simply to start tracing. So I'm going to go around my sketch and on that new layer, I'm going to just start tracing around the areas that I've sketched. Next, you're going to want to simply tap and hold on your color wheel up at the top right hand corner. Click and drag down to the places you want to fill to fill. Now, if you want an outline logo, I recommend not doing this step or create a duplicate layer of your outline and fill that one in and then export both separately to Illustrator, which is step three. To export from Procreate to Illustrator, normally I will press the wrench icon and then I will go down and choose PSD. And since I have all Apple products, I simply airdrop it to my MacBook Pro where I move into Illustrator. The first thing you're going to want to do in Illustrator is make sure when you open the file that you click convert layers to objects because you want each layer, especially if you have multiple layers, to be separate objects. That is going to give you a file with separated layers for all of the different things that you did in Procreate. Have them all here and basically you're going to click on the layer you want, whether that's your outline or your full design and you're going to click image trace. Now, if your design is more detailed, this might not work for you, but this is the best way to do it, in my opinion, if you have a very clean design. Then you're gonna click expand. You're gonna right click, ungroup, and then I click away to see if it's actually ungrouped. And what I'm doing is I'm deleting the background here. And then you'll see it turned these background pieces into white spaces, so I'm just gonna go and collect all of those. You can also select select, <laughs> and hit same and hit fill color and that will make sure you get all of those done and then you just delete and then you have pieces to work with. Now there's a couple things I want to clean up here so first thing I notice is this it just needs to be not touching. I'd like to straighten out some of these lines here and smooth them. I'd like to bring this line down a bit. Um, I'd also like to make this um, circle a little bit more circular. So here we go. What the tool image trace does is it creates vectors based off of the contrast in the picture you 
import. So if you import something that is um, strongly contrasted, it's going to create a vector based off of that. And so you can see it's got all these tiny little points and the best way to smooth these things out is to actually go in and clear some of those points out and make the curves a little bit stronger and less overpopulated. Once you've done all the tweaks you wanna do and you're happy with the design, you can go in and add different elements. So I would like to add an offset path here. So basically I'm just gonna go into object offset path and I'm gonna make it about eight and that's gonna give me a different outline. And then I'm also gonna go in and add a drop shadow. So this would be something I would present to a client and ask, hey, what do you think of this? And then they would give me feedback and we would be able to go through a couple of rounds of edits, most likely on different tweaks they'd like to see made. I'm just adding some final tweaks here, just filling in a couple of the holes that were distracting, and there we have it. That's it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe logodesign.net so you don't miss any of our other great tutorials. And remember, for all your logo design needs, to visit logodesign.net.